Hey, welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. My name's Thomas. Today's video, we're working on a 1998 Ford Ranger. We're gonna do the front brakes and the upper control arm. After that, we got like two or three other jobs. So buck what, I man, we got a long day, but we're gonna make some good money. All right, guys, we're headed over to the first job. It's that 1998 Ford Ranger. We're gonna do the front brakes and the front upper control arm on the driver's side. It's our first job. We have a total of three jobs today. So we're gonna work probably three to four hour work time, make somewhere between 200 and 250. All right, we're jumping right into this. We already have the vehicle jacked up, so we're knocking these lug nuts off. Once you get them off, you go ahead and remove that tire. Once you get the tire off, go ahead and throw your jack stand under. You gotta be safe. We're gonna go ahead and knock this out right now. Grab you a 13 millimeter socket. Take that top bolt off the caliber. Drop down, take the bottom one off as well. All right, we're gonna grab our C clamp and we're gonna put it on the caliber. We need to push the piston in a little bit, just like this. Once you have it pushed in, then you can take the caliber right off. Once you have it off, now you can take the brake pads off. Now grab one of the mold pads that you just took off and put it right here on the pistons. We're gonna push the pistons all the way in. We're gonna use the C-clamp right here. We're gonna push the old brake pad into the pistons and push them all the way in. Now once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and put on the new brake pads. Put your first one in nice and easy. And put your back one in just the same should go on nice and fine. And now grab your caliber and you'll be able to put your caliber back on. This is why we push the pistons in the beginning because if you don't push the pistons in, it won't go back on over the new brake pads. So once you have the caliber on, go ahead and line it up and put your 13 millimeter bolts back in. You hand tighten them first and then you grab your 13 millimeter socket and you tighten them down nice and snug, but don't over tighten them. And I know you're sick of seeing brake pad videos, but this is a day in the life of a mobile mechanic. This is what I do every day, at least two or three brake pad jobs. Look, we have a job other than brake pads. We gotta take it off the upper control arm. So grab your 15 millimeter socket, go ahead and break this loose. This is a pinch bolt, so you wanna go ahead and knock that bolt all the way through so we can take off the upper control arm. But if it's rusted like this one, sometimes you gotta put a little heat to it. And another thing you can do is put the 15 millimeter socket on this side like this and try to get it to spin. If it starts to spin, then you know you'll be able to knock it through now. So you can go ahead and hit it with your hammer like this. And then you can grab a punch or a screwdriver and put it on the end like this and tap it out rest of the way. Then you can grab a 21 millimeter socket and start loosening the bolt on the left side of the control arm. Once we have that loosened, then you go onto the right side of the control arm. You can see it was very tight, so we had to use an extra long bar for some leverage. Now you're going to take a pickle fork, place it right under the upper ball joint, and you're going to hammer it in so you can separate it from the knuckle. Once you get it separated like this, then we're going to go back up to the right side of the upper control arm because we need to remove the stud on the right side and the left side so we can remove this whole control arm. You're gonna take your hammer and you're gonna hit the stud and then you're gonna have to take your hand and you're gonna have to wiggle it out, work its way out. There's not a lot of room up there. But once you do this on both sides, then all you need to do is get your pry bar and you're gonna pry on the left side, pry it up out of the grooves and then you'll move to the right side it up out of the grooves on that side as well and then you can take the upper control arm right out now we're going to go ahead and put the new upper control arm in you're going to set it in place you'll use your hammer to hit it in past the grooves it'll take a minute hitting it back and forth to get it lined up perfectly once you have it lined up you'll set in the stud just like this from the inside out you'll need to push it in just like this Takes a minute to work it back and forth, but just be patient and you'll be able to get it lined up perfect like that. See on the right side, this one's a little bit tougher. There's not a lot of room. So you have to just take your time and work it back and forth. 
there's no rush. Once you have it through, you'll set these up just the way they was when the, you took them off. So once you take these off, you set them down just the same way. So when you put them back, you can put them back on the exact same way. That way you might not have to get an alignment when you're done. All right, now we're just tightening the bolts back like they was. And now we're putting the upper ball joint back down into the knuckle. Take your hammer, go ahead and hit it down into place. Once it's down in place, you go ahead and put your pinch bolt back in. Use your hammer, tap it all the way through. Go ahead and you can tighten it back down. And that is it. Just throw your tire back on. And that's it for that job. Made some good money, some hard work. Now we're done. Now we're back on the road. We're headed over to another job. 2012 Nissan Versa. We're doing the front brakes. It's for a buddy named John Bean Smith. A friend I grew up with. So we're only going to charge him 50 bucks. So we're going to take care of him. On the way there, I did notice I am completely out of gas. So I start hauling ass trying to get to the gas station. And as soon as I look up, I see the cop right there. What a day. But whatever, we made it. Here's the 2012 Nissan Versa. We're doing the front brakes on this bad boy. But my buddy was telling me about these flowers. So he wanted his flowers on this video. So I got it on there for him. All right, let's go ahead and jack this bad boy up. Go ahead, take the lug nuts off like normal. This tire was stuck on there, so we had to use the hammer and hit it off. Get the tire off. Like I said, sorry, it's always front brakes. But I did find on this vehicle, their lower ball joint, as you can see, is completely busted. So they're going to get that fixed pretty soon. Anyway, use our 14 millimeter. Knock these bolts off. Let's get the caliber off like normal. All right, now that we got both bolts off, we're using a screwdriver right here to push the piston in a little bit so we can get the caliber off. Once we have the caliber off, we're gonna go ahead and take off the brake pads. These old ones, they was completely gone. I mean, 99% gone. As you can see, look at that. All the way down to the metal. Anyway, you put the old pad up there on the piston to push it in. We're using the C-clamp like normal. You push it in nice and slow. Do not do it fast. Just take your time pushing the piston in. You don't want to bust the rubber around the piston. And now I'm going to show you the difference between the new brake pads and the old ones. As you can see, there's a major difference there. So we really did need them. Also came with some brake grease this time. So we're gonna put it on all the hardware on the caliber or the caliber bracket. Also, you're gonna put it on the ends of the brake pads just so it slides in better and it doesn't make any noise when you hit the brake. Go ahead and slide it in like normal. Get your brake pad in the back put in as well. Now, this is why we push the piston in on the caliber, so it'll go over the new brakes. Go ahead and get the bolts. Hand tighten them. Then go ahead and grab your socket, and you're gonna tighten them down until they're nice and snug. And that is it. Let's go ahead and throw our tire back on. Zip the lug nuts down, and that is it. Welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. We just knocked the front brakes off this Nissan Versa. I'm only charging them $50 because it's a friend, Bean Smith. Thank you, pal. He's giving me a $10 tip. Too. So we made $60 bucks in about 40 minutes. So getting in the car, we're headed to the next shop. All right, now we're headed to the last call of the day. It's a 2010 Chevy Equinox. They can't get the vehicle to start, so we're going to do a no start diagnosis for $65. 
Hopefully we can get it started for him or get it figured out for him. But it's our last call of the day. And on scene, we started doing our diagnosis and we could tell the starter wasn't working. So instead of replacing the starter, you need to check the starter fuse for the starter relay. As you can see, it's number 63, starter. Come over here and you find out where number 63 is. There's 61, 62, and 63. They're the same size relay, so you can swap one out with another to check the relay. And that is exactly what we did. We swapped two of them around. We got in the vehicle and it started right up. So it wasn't the starter, it was the starter relay. We went to AutoZone, got it for 10 bucks, and put the new one in. And that concludes our day. We did three jobs, worked about three and a half hours. We made $220. So guys, thank you for being with me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And leave me a comment if you want some more videos like this. Simplify till next time.